Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about the Steam Deck, Flash games, and more. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about Flash emulation with Ruffle, and Ruffle just released their progress report. I'll drop a link to it in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out. Now, first and foremost, they say dozens upon dozens of ActionScript 2 games have been fixed. There's also been a whole bunch of progress for ActionScript 3 support. And for those of you looking to use this on mobile devices, they've made a lot of improvements as well. Text input boxes are finally supported, and the context menu finally works on iOS. On top of that, they've introduced dynamic audio buffering, which improves audio playback and should be less stuttering. If you're a fan of Flash games, Ruffle is 100% free, it's open source, it's available on Windows and Linux, and also in a browser, and I'll leave a link to it in the description below and feel free to check it out. And speaking about free and open source, next up we're talking about Playnight, and Playnight is an open source video game library manager with one simple goal, to provide a unified interface for all of your games and Playnight version 10.10 .10 and 10.11 have just released. So in this new version, we've got a whole bunch of bug fixes and some brand new features. For example, there's now the option to minimize full screen mode from the main menu. And there's also an option to indicate number of days played in game time played format. Moving on, and we're talking about Minecraft on the Nintendo Switch. And back in February, they released version 1.19.60. It was an update that caused a lot of issues. And this month, they've just released version 1.19.7, and apparently it's also causing some big issues. According to Mojang's website, there's a bug report here that says the game will not open and stuck at 66% on the loading screen after updating to this version. This is super unfortunate and very interesting. You'd think they'd test this out before they released it. And speaking about updates, next up we're talking about the Steam Deck. And we talked about this update when it was in beta, but now it's live. Steam Deck client update from March 15th introduces a really cool new feature. Local network game transfers. If you've downloaded and installed a game on your PC, you can transfer it over to your Steam Deck without having to re-download it, which is pretty awesome. But wait, there's more. In addition to that, they've moved the advanced HDR options to developer settings. They've also added in support here for the Sony DualSense Edge. And there's a whole bunch of bug fixes and some other minor improvements. It's probably worth updating your Steam Deck if you can. But if for some reason you can't update because maybe you don't have a Steam Deck because you haven't picked one up yet, well, it might be a good time to pick one up because Steam is celebrating the first year anniversary of the Steam Deck with a 10% discount. In my opinion here, and this might be controversial, but I really don't think so. The best Steam Deck to pick up is the cheapest one. If you wanted to expand your storage, it's really simple. Just buy a micro SD card and stick it in. And speaking about sales, Steam has just launched their spring sales and it might be worth checking out your wish list because Steam usually has pretty darn good discounts and I'm excited about this one. Next up here, we're still talking about the Steam Deck and Retro Deck just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, version 0.6.2b is the latest version. We've got a whole bunch of bug fixes, some updates and improvements. For example, they've updated the Libretro Core Cores. They've also added in a brand new tool here to do CHD compression, which will save you a ton of space for your games. Retro Deck is free, it's open source, it's a great way to get into emulation on your Steam Deck, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below, so feel free to check it out. Next up, we're quickly talking about iPhone OS emulation with Touch HLE, and someone appears to be in the process of porting Touch HLE over to iPhone. So iPhone OS emulation on Android. I'm kind of curious to see if someone ends up porting this over to iOS and then you've got iPhone OS emulation on iOS. And speaking about Android, last up here we're talking about a couple of pretty big updates to a couple of pretty big Android games. The first one is Dead by Daylight Mobile. They have basically released a brand new game. It's a massive overhaul and you might want to check this one out if you're playing Dead by Daylight. And Vampire Survivors, which just released their Legacy of the Moonspell DLC. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point. All stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.